Hey there! You probably clicked on this video wondering, what are the most spoken languages on Earth? Today, we're running down the top 10 languages with the most native speakers, where they're spoken, and what makes each of them unique. The answers may surprise you. Hey all you bitizens of the internet, welcome to Learn A Bit. So today, we're asking the question, what are the 10 most spoken languages in the world? Well, the answer actually isn't that straightforward, as you'll soon see. Let's very quickly establish some ground rules before we start our list. Setting aside several issues out of our control, like poor census data and estimates in some regions of the world, our question depends on two factors. First, it depends on whether you're counting by native speakers, those who learn language fluently in childhood, or by all speakers meaning native speakers plus those who learn the language later in life as an additional language. Second, it also depends on what is considered a language. Like, how much variation can we realistically have between two varieties of speech and still call them the same language? So we don't have to ask what it even means to say that someone learning the language speaks a language. We'll just be counting native speakers. But I will show a list of the top 10 most spoken languages overall including non-native speakers, at the end. Please remember, this is all just a bit subjective, so if you disagree and you want to count them another way, this will hopefully give you the data to make your own list. All right, great. I'll be going through where each language is spoken, why it's as widely spoken as it is, and some interesting fun facts about the language and its culture. Without further ado, let's go. Coming in at number 10, Punjabi is a language many people may never have heard of before. It belongs to the Indo-Aryan branch of the Indo-European language family, meaning it is actually a distant cousin of many major European languages like English, Spanish, Russian, German, or French. Punjabi is native to the very fertile, and hence very populous, Punjab region of Pakistan and India. Punjabi culture is very important to the cultural fabric of both countries, and many of its cultural exports, like food, music, and dancing, are instantly recognizable even to people outside of South Asia. Punjabi also has a disproportionately large diaspora community of speakers around the world as well. It's actually the fifth most spoken language in the UK and Canada, for example. It's very unusual among Indo-Aryan and Indo-European languages because it is partially a tonal language, meaning it uses different intonations to distinguish between several words which would otherwise sound the same. Tones are a well-known linguistic feature in many East Asian languages like Mandarin, Thai, and Vietnamese, as well as many African and North and South American languages, but it's very unusual for an Indo-Aryan or Indo-European language. Coming in at number 9, although the Japanese language today is only widely spoken in Japan, because of the enormous cultural and economic influence of Japan, the language is everywhere. Japan's expansive media culture includes J-pop, all things kawaii, video game companies like Nintendo, and of course, anime and manga. And so, learning Japanese has become very popular among Japanese culture enthusiasts. Interestingly, the language uses three different writing systems that work together to write in Japanese. Kanji, hiragana, and katakana. Kanji are symbols taken from Chinese characters and made to fit the Japanese language which can get kind of strange because Japanese and Chinese languages aren't related at all. They're actually used for lots of stuff, particularly common, everyday things. Hiragana and katakana, which were introduced later than kanji, are syllabaries, writing systems in which one character symbolizes a whole syllable instead of individual sounds like in an alphabet. Japanese is a syllabic language. Grossly oversimplifying here, Hiragana is used for function words or to spell out native Japanese words that don't have kanji characters, while katakana is used for foreign loan words or foreign names. There's also technically romaji, which is Japanese written in the Latin alphabet. So yeah, lots of fun learning to write in Japanese. Number eight, Russian. Russian is the official language of Russia, Belarus, Kazakhstan, and Kyrgyzstan, and has major communities in all of the countries of the former Soviet Union, both as a native language and a second language. Russian is the native language of the majority of Russia and Belarus, more than a quarter of the populations of Latvia, Estonia, and Ukraine, of more than 15% of Kazakhstan and Israel, and of more than 5% of the populations of Moldova, Kyrgyzstan, Lithuania, and Turkmenistan. 
It's famous for being the largest language written in the Cyrillic alphabet, which is actually heavily based on the Greek alphabet. So if you know the Greek alphabet, you've already got a huge head start on learning to read in Russian. Coming in at number seven might be another surprise, Portuguese. Yeah, that's right. Portuguese is actually the second largest romance language in the world by native speakers. While almost 90% of Portuguese speakers are Brazilian, the language is actually spoken on four different continents and is official in nine countries. It's actually becoming a major language in Africa in particular because of the growing former Portuguese colonies of Angola, Mozambique, Guinea-Bissau, Cabo Verde, and Sao Tome and Principe, several of which have Portuguese or Portuguese Creole-speaking majorities. Number six, Bengali. This one might come as yet another surprise. Bengali is another Indo-Aryan language spoken in Bangladesh and the Indian state of West Bengal. Sitting on the delta of the Ganges River, one of the most fertile sites on Earth, this language's speakers are mostly confined to an area slightly larger than the U.S. state of Iowa. Bengali is a language famous for its writing and literature. And perhaps its best-known poet, Rabindranath Tagore, was actually the first person outside of Europe to receive the Nobel Prize for Literature. So here's something interesting. The Bengali script, like many other writing systems of South Asia, is actually not an alphabet, but rather a type of script called an abugida. Whereas an alphabet has individual symbols for all of its sounds, consonants, and vowels, an abugida only has unique characters for its consonants. Its vowels are actually expressed by modifying the consonant characters with small markings. Number five, Arabic. Arabic was spread during and after the Islamic conquests of the Middle East and North Africa, eventually becoming the native language there. So at number five, this spot is somewhat of a controversial one. Now, please keep it civil in the comments section. This is a very politically charged issue. Why is it controversial, you might ask? Well, that's because Arabic actually has a lot of very different dialects, some of which are very distinct from one another. Here's a comparison between a couple of dialects. Arabic today is probably best described as a very long dialect continuum. I previously made a video that explains what a dialect continuum is, so I won't get into it here. There is a standardized international version of Arabic called Modern Standard Arabic. The controversy here, though, is that no one speaks this standard language as a native language. They speak dialects, and Modern Standard Arabic is learned in school as something like a second language. If Arabic were broken into different dialects, it would actually fall off this list, and the Marathi language of India would move up to number 10. All right, coming in at number four is Hindi. Hindi is the largest Indo-Aryan language in the world, and maybe even larger if we include speakers of the mutually intelligible language Urdu. Linguists often combine them into one language called Hindustani, because speakers can understand one another. Hindi is one of the national languages of India, serving as a lingua franca for much of northern India today. It's a cultural powerhouse spread far and wide by India's main media center, Bollywood. Hindi is written in the Devanagari script, while Urdu, the national language of Pakistan, is written in the Persian adaptation of the Arabic script. If they are considered the same language, it would be one of several languages officially written in multiple different scripts. Number three, English. English is the closest the world has to a universal language, spread far and wide by the British Empire, which previously dominated the globe, as well as by the hegemonic cultural and economic power of the United States. English is an official language of 55 countries and 27 non-sovereign territories, and is spoken on all six permanently inhabited continents. Although it's a Germanic language, more than half of its vocabulary actually comes from Romance languages, specifically French and Latin, due to the successful Norman-French invasion of England in 1066. Number two, the Spanish language, also known as Castilian, is the most spoken language in the Americas. The massive Spanish empire was once the dominant force in Europe and one of the most powerful colonial empires of all time, spanning huge parts of Western Europe, the Americas, Southeast Asia, and even Africa. Not only is Spanish official in most of Latin America, but it's actually also official in Africa in the country of Equatorial Guinea. The most spoken romance language on earth, Spanish is famous for its conjugations and perhaps even more so for the tilde, that little tail thing that appears over the N in the letter Enye. 
The tilde actually originated when scribes copying Latin were short on space and decided to use the tilde to show doubled letters, in this case double Ns. Today, however, ny makes the ny sound. Finally, coming in at number one is Mandarin Chinese. Mandarin Chinese is the single largest language on earth by native speakers, with almost double the number of speakers as second place Spanish. Although it can be found in pockets all over East Asia and all over the globe for that matter, it's actually only an official language in three countries, China, Taiwan, and Singapore. Fun fact for all of you who struggled with Spanish and French class because of all those conjugations, Mandarin actually has no verb conjugations or tenses like the Romance languages love. Past, present, and future are expressed through context phrases like yesterday and tomorrow. All right, so I promise I talk about the most spoken languages in the world by total number of speakers, and here they are. See, that changes things a little bit, doesn't it? A lot of these languages have far more second language speakers than they do native speakers, particularly English. And that might not even be the full extent of English either. Conservative estimates place the total number of speakers right around 1.2 billion speakers, or 16% of the entire planet, but some estimates place it as high as 2 billion speakers, or over a quarter of the entire human species. Here's a really fascinating visualization. Of the 10 million most visited websites, 60% of them are in English, whereas Mandarin only makes up a fraction of them, despite China having the single largest number of internet users of any country. All right, so those are the 10 most spoken languages on earth, plus something fun about each one of them. I hope you guys enjoyed, and if you guys believe this video deserved a like, a comment, or even a subscribe, that would be greatly appreciated. This has been Learn A Bit, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.